G'day mate, welcome back to Oxygen Included with me, Jetty. We're back with my guide to geysers. Now, we covered all our cold geysers in the last video. Our link's up in the top right hand corner. So, we covered our cool slash geyser, our polluted water vent, our water geyser, a salt water geyser, an infectious polluted oxygen, the chlorine gas vent, and the carbon dioxide vent. We also covered the cool steam vent all in the last video. So, if you haven't seen that video, as I said, link's at the top right hand corner. Today, I want to cover the hot friends. So, we have our super hot iron, copper, and gold volcano. I'm just going to cover that as one build because essentially it's the same build for all three volcanoes. I'm also going to cover the hot polluted oxygen, hydrogen vent, and the carbon dioxide vent again as one build because all these guys pump out uh, gas at 500 degrees Celsius. Um, no duplicates were harmed in the making of this video. Um, then we're going to cover our minor volcano and our major volcano. Again, it's one build. It, really just depends on how much uh, magma they're putting out. Uh, lastly, we're going to cover, well, last two, is going to be our leaky oil fissure, which is the one that just pumps out uh, hot oil all the time. Uh, and then we're going to cover our steam vent. So our steam vent is, it's got its own unique build because it's actually pumping out steam at 500 degrees Celsius, and we can turn that steam straight into power. So going through our list, we're going to start with the steam vent. Uh, I'm going to pause this really quickly to run through how this one works. So we have a steam vent. Uh, this particular steam vent is putting out two and a half kilograms a second. So I need to be able to use two and a half kilograms per second of steam, and that is going to affect the size of your build. In my case, um, I've worked out that roughly four steam turbines uses that amount of steam per second and make sure that this guy never over pressurizes and has too much steam in the room. I've also got a fairly large room as you can see um, just to give me somewhere to to really dump all that steam before the steam turbines can burn it up. You may be able to get away with three turbines, two turbines, you might need five. All depends on how big and how powerful your steam vent is. Uh, next up I have our battery bank. Um, all my steam turbines are hooked up to just dump water into this last chamber. Now this last chamber is actually a special chamber. What I've actually built here is a, basically I can run this Thermo Aqua Tuner indefinitely for zero power cost. Um, this is actually a power generation system. I'm every single cycle netting more power from this. Um, so this Thermo Aqua Tuner, you could use, well, I'm already using it to cool all these steam turbines. On top of that, you could use it to cool more of your base, as much as your base as you potentially wanted and potentially could. Um, I will add a few notes about this. As you can see, I've got this little outcrop stuck out here because these steam turbines, uh, this is probably my better example. I do not want their wattage to go over 850 watts. Once their wattage goes over 850 watts, they'll actually dump a lot of excess heat from the steam that they're bringing in because it's such high temperature um, out as extra heat into the machine rather than actually turning into, uh, well, turning into power. So if they get up to 850 watts, and again, every single system is going to be slightly different, you're going to want to block some of these vents. Now, I have the advantage of doing all this in debug mode, so I get dupes, dupes in here fairly easily, or just build things in debug mode to block extra vents. If you don't have that option, obviously you don't in um, survival mode, uh, build in some mechanical doors. Just add in some mechanical doors, add in some automation wire, individually if needs be. Uh, and hydro sensors. Hydro sensors are brilliant because these basically work as on off switches. I can use each one of these to open or shut a door as I see fit to open or block vents on these, um, on this particular turbine. So, as I said, these guys work wonders to be able to let you modify a system in use. You could even go as smart as adding in, um, Thermo sensors, so as the steam starts to cool down in this room, or the start of the pressure starts to decrease, you could have doors automatically open and shut. In my case, I just added extra steam turbines; it was fine. But yes, you do you are going to want to be able to block, or you are going to want to block um, a few in uh, a few ports on the two machines you have directly above the steam vent. So, as I said, I'm taking all the water from these four steam vents because we're getting free steam which we're converting into water. So I'm getting that free water and I'm dumping into this last chamber. I also have this steam turbine here, which is getting steam from this room and also dumping it in the exact same chamber. Now, in this chamber, as you can see, I'm up to 600 kilos. So this has been running for 
probably about 25 cycles and I've got a lot of steam already. Um, already in this chamber, which is just free water and steam from this turbine. But because I have this thermo aqua tuna running all the time, this is keeping this steam hot, which is making sure that this aqua, uh, this steam turbine, even though it has one vent blocked, is giving me 280 watts constant power. If I wasn't blocking that vent, uh, we'll just test it really quickly. Um, I'd probably get a little bit of extra power out of it, 290 watts, uh, 350 watts. So with this one, you probably don't want to block any vents. Um, I just a mistake in the manufacturing process caused me to block that vent. Uh, we're going to deconstruct those so we can show you how this works. I also have two thermosensors. The thermosensors are set to 200 degrees. That is in case, by some miraculous way, the steam in this room happens to hit 200 degrees. Um, these will actually open these three mechanical doors and let that steam out. And we're just going to really quickly open those doors to see this in effect because i have 600 kilograms of steam in this room it's going to obviously flow straight out this room is designed to handle steam so i'm going to straight away be able to power up all these steam turbines and get rid of some of that steam and convert it back into power by just opening those doors so if you ever run into a situation where the base is sort of having a brownout you have stored power in this room which you can, as I said, just open up the doors, let the steam vent in the room, run it through these steam turbines and dump it back in this room. Um, this system here is actually so power efficient that my aqua tuner, which is cooling all these turbines, is actually coming down here and running through this... Um, I guess it's a heater, really. It's, it's running through this area where I actually have a... Thermo sensor hooked up to a liquid tepidizer to keep this room warm, to keep the water in this room warm. So I have this aqua tuna always has something to do. So this is something I just want to show off. It's it's actually running its own cooling plus its own heating to negate its own cooling, which is entirely unnecessary. I'm sure you have some hot stuff in your base you wish to cool. Um, along with comes with its own technical built-in back battery system. Um, normally I only recommend running that when the steam vent is actually dormant because it's going to take a while for these steam turbines to dig through 50 kilograms of steam. So that's that particular build. I'm a real fan of this build. I love this build. Um, it took me a little while to come up with, but yeah, it's, it's worked wonders. Oh, the only other thing I wanted to show is there is a chance, given that this runs long enough, that you'll actually get a thousand kilograms of steam in this room. If that happens, both these liquid vents overpressurize. So what I've actually done is I actually have an overflow here, which takes it out, which dumps it into a tank or wherever else you want to use hot water. Um, the plumbing's fairly simple. The electricity is fa fairly simple. You are going to have a fair bit of power on the steam turbine um, line, especially when the um, steam vent first goes off, as all these guys peak out at around about an average of 700 watts each, um, plus the... 280 350 you're getting constant from this turbine so yeah you are going to run up need to run heavy watt wire through this whole build uh next one you don't erupt for two cycles so we're going to come over here we're going to look at our carbon dioxide vent so our carbon dioxide vent our carbon dioxide vent our hydrogen vent and our hot polluted oxygen vent these are all built this exact same way um they all obviously need some sort of tweaking depending on which exact vent it is, but they're all basically on the same sort of build. Um, I have a pretty stock standard by now, Thermo Aqua Tuna, linked up, linked up to a steam turbine, just circulating cool water through. This um, carbon dioxide vent is pumping out carbon dioxide at a whopping 500 degrees, but because the carbon dioxide has just such a poor thermal mass in it, this has been sitting here for 30 cycles, it hasn't even forced the aqua tuna to heat up enough to um, actually convert the water into steam. It, it, it's basically been sitting there the whole time doing absolutely nothing. It is set to 80 degrees because 80 degrees is more than enough cooling um, in the carbon dioxide vent. I just really need enough that I don't blow up the steam, the, the, the turbine, which I have to keep at sub 100 degrees Celsius. Um, really, you want to get the carbon dioxide down to around about 250 or around about 150 degrees total um, and yeah I just have a gas pump here set with a bit of automation 
a thermo sensor, if it's less than 150 degrees, if it's greater than 500, gra yeah, 500 grams of pressure, we're going to pub it into this room, which I have a couple of gas vents that are bugged and tricked out so we can overpressurize this room up to 180 kilos and we would just keep pumping carbon dioxide into here event you know forever eventually after about 200 cycles this will heat up this will fire up the thermo aqua tuner in the case of a carbon dioxide vent if it's a hydrogen vent which has a lot more thermal mass uh for a specific heat capacity and thermal conductivity for a, a single tile of hot well a single gram of hydrogen or kilogram worth of hydrogen compared to your carbon dioxide um you're going to run the aqua tuner a lot more often it's going to be a lot more power negative system polluted oxygen it's sort of in the halfway point between the two so again it's going to use a little bit of power um compared to the hydrogen which use a lot of power and the carbon dioxide it's going to use pretty much nothing um the thermal mass of of just the temp shift plate temp shift plates and other things i added to this room um, have been enormous, more than enough to keep the carbon dioxide con condensing and cooling, well, cooling the whole time. Um, as for the plumbing, pretty simple. We're just running the aqua tuner, same, same as last time, with a thermo pipe uh, sensor hooked up to the aqua tuner, set to 80 degrees Celsius. We've got liquid in. We're then bypassing it and jumping it over to make sure the liquid keeps moving. This is a free loop. It's just going to keep going around and around forever. Um, we're just running the radiant pipe, which is just copper, nothing exquisite, through the room, uh, through the turbine itself to make sure the tur turbine stays, stays cool. And I have some temp shift plates in here made out of copper. Um, same story with the uh, aqua tuner. It's in a puddle of oil. It's made out of gold, so we're not using high high quality items yet um you are going to make need to make the gas pump out of steel because when these especially the hydrogen one when the hydrogen vent first erupts that pump will get very very hot very very quickly it will cool down but it will also get very hot to start with um so yeah you, you're gonna need at least one piece of steel for this build um as for everything else look it's it's all copper it's gold it's temp shift plates out of copper or um it's it's a pretty basic build uh next one we're actually going to have it we're going to look at is leaky oil fissure now leaky oil fissure if you remember i said was a little bit of a difficult one because you're constantly pumping out oil at 300 odd degrees celsius now the way i got around that is again this is going to need a 100 percent steel build because that oil is going to be hot but we've actually negated it and um, as you can see, this is not hooked up to anything. This is running off its own power and will keep running off its own power forever. So this will actually generate power somewhat for your base. Um, I When the steam gets hot enough, um, that's going to be the other catch. So what I've actually done here is I have the leaky oil fissure, which is jump it, dumping oil on the ground. Before that, I added a bunch of water into this room before I opened up the leaky oil fissure. So once the leaky oil fissure started opening, uh, started dumping out its oil that oil had to interact with the water which they converted into steam which is then running through our steam turbine cooling down from 125 degrees celsius down to we're going to try and turn on it's not quite hot enough for a second um it's going to try and it's going to turn on it's going to dump out that liquid as water right here which is going to drop back into the system and keep that steam circulating around along with deleting heat each time it passes through the system our steel our li liquid pump is made out of steel so it does have that really high overheat temperature not that this one's particularly hot but it has been running for a number of cycles so it has cooled down an awful lot um it's hooked up to a hydro sensor the hydro sensor is set fairly high because i do want a lot of liquid down here so when the hot oil comes out it has some cooler oil that it has to interact with to not bounce that temperature up and down too fast so i have some reasonably cool oil um, down here and I've just set the pump to only turn on 250 degrees Celsius finally we've got some temp shift plates uh, these are made out of lead of all things so really really dangerously low melting point but just to prove that it can be done um, so we got some lead temp shift plates just to try and move that steam around um, here we go the steam turbines turning on and it's making a whopping 230 watts worth of power it's enough to recharge the batteries. Um, finally, we have our uh, aqua tuner down here, which is just trying to cool down the liquid, um, really to cool down just the um, 
just the steam turbine. The, the, the steam itself has enough thermal mass in it that we don't really need to do anything else. So, you know, the, the, the Aquatune is literally there just to cool down the steam turbine. If you had some other cooling anywhere else in your base, this requires so little effort that you could just run a cooling plant past this once. Um, as you can see, I already have... What's that? Uh, one half, one half tons worth of oil out of this system. Um, so it, it is a little bit of oil, not a lot, running continuously. Um, and over time, it will add up. As I said, this is a this is a completely power positive system. So very, very easy one to set up. It does require a little bit of tweaking, of having to get the water in first before we actually break open the leaky oil fissure. But once it's done, boom, voila power positive system uh okay let's go look at our volcano Ooh, it's erupts in 1.3 cycles so we'll just go through super fast speed for a moment so what i actually have here is we have an aqua tuna same story as always which is actually cooling down all these steam turbines um these are all 70 odd degrees you know they're a little bit warm uh we're down to one cycle um, I have, same story as always, a, a, yeah, no duplicates died for making this video. Uh, go away. Um, same, same story as always, this one's actually, I've set all the way down to 40 degrees just for demonstration purposes, but really 80 degrees is more than enough. Um, we have, it's sitting in a bit of oil, it is gold amalgam again, this is a fairly low tech build as well. So we're running a gold amalgam aqua tuna with a, one of those temp shift plates made out of copper ore just to transfer the heat from the oil into the steam we have a single steam turbine which now i know from my previous example i really wish i'd moved over an extra tile to get a little bit more power out of this guy um you're slowly trying to get there okay um so yeah it's it's creating a little bit of power when we have enough steam or enough heat in this steam um, that's actually probably why i set it lower to try and actually get this steam back up to temperature uh, that's an auto save. 0.7 a cycle. In the actual volcano room, I guess we can put it. I've got all the water joining together into a single liquid vent, which I'm dripping straight over the volcano. Um, all this igneous rock is down here from previous eruptions. The only reasonably high tech stuff I have actually in here is a bunch of diamond shift plates. The reason I actually use diamond is because they have a very, very high thermal conductivity. I want to transfer the heat out of this igneous rock that's on the ground, which is still 180 degrees. 180 degrees, I can still get a lot of heat out of that. Um, and that is hopefully going to transfer into the diamond and then into the steam. Um, I do want to mention that after I've... Because there's debris on the ground, and this is something that I forgot about, but it's one of the, the quirks of oxygen not included. Um, because there's debris on the ground, I'm actually transferring... They're actually transferring the heat into my insulated tile. So it is one of the things with this particular build, because you're dealing with debris in the ground, you are going to want to double insulate the floor at least. And then we'll just do that one because then it's identical and lines up and symmetry and all that sort of stuff. So that is one thing with this build. You are going to need to double insulate the floor just because you are going to lose some heat into that um, ground uh, insulated tile. Uh, on top of that, really... It's a pretty basic build. You just, when the volcano erupts, it's gonna bunch, uh, it's gonna dump out a, let's run super speed again. It's gonna dump out a bunch of magma that's really, really hot. Because we have a lot of steam in here, and that's one of the things I did do. I did put some steam in this room and then it wasn't quite enough. So I just hooked up a pipe into the inlet um, for, uh, well, into the outlet for the steam turbines just to dump a bit more water into this room and the idea of this is you just want as much thermal mass as possible in that steam um, so when the volcano erupts we don't actually get magma we go straight to igneous rock because there is already so much thermal mass in this room and we're about to see it happen um, so yeah we're gonna get so we've got six tons at 900 uh, 900 whoops, six tons at 900 degrees uh one ton at 200 degrees and another 900 kilos at 300 degrees and this is going to erupt and all of these will have just a little bit more igneous rock added to them uh oh there we go 
As you can see, that one's going up in both mass and temperature. Uh, that one a little bit as well, not so much. That one as well. And it's just adding more thermal mass to the room. As you can see, straight away, these guys actually peak out in temperature. So that is one of the times that, like, maybe you wanted to be a little bit smart and set up some doors on this system and, and spend a little bit of time and effort with some automation opening and shutting doors depending on how hot the steam is in this room. Because as you can see, I'm already heating up well 400, 500 degrees Celsius, which is basically dumping a lot of heat into this machine um if we look at like all these machines should be well this one's active and this one's active but you see we're at 69 degrees compared to 70 70.1 so we are dumping extra power generation waste we are dumping a lot of extra heat into the actual machine which is forcing our aquatuna to work hard um it is still a power positive system in, in excess, as you've got a bunch of batteries up here and they're happily charging up. Um, so yeah, this is a fairly easy build again. The only thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna keep dumping a lot more water into this system. Um, if you're lucky enough to get one of these builds, you might take the excess water out of this and just dump it in here, or just you know, just dump a water in here forever until these guys stop picking out when the uh, volcano erupts. Again. Every volcano is slightly different, so every volcano, uh, vol every geyser volcano tamer will be again slightly different, game to game to game. So, um, great little system, lots and lots of free power. Um, plumbing is fairly simple. Um, we're just running, you know, cooling pipe through this aqua tuner, keeps everything cool. Temp shift plates in the background. Uh, automation. We just have the one automation from the liquid. Uh, Liquid pipe, thermosensor, straight in the aqua tuner. That is the whole automation of the whole thing. Power, again, I've been lazy. I've just run everything on a single wire. Realistically, you're going to want like heavy watt wire and all that sort of stuff. But this was just a give you an idea of how things work. The last one I actually have over here is... When do you erupt? One cycle. Let's go back at a super speed. Uh, last one I actually have over here... Uh, is a... Iron Volcano Tamer. And again, this is running perfectly self-sufficient. So if we look at the power overlay, it's only hooked up to itself. It's actually generating power and it'll keep generating power as long as that volcano is active. We're taking the heat that the volcano is bringing out. So the seven kilograms at two hundred and two and a half thousand degrees. Um, so we're taking the excess heat that the volcano is pumping out, dismiss. Um, excess heat the volcano is pumping out. And we're turning that into free power. And the way we're actually doing that is, this one's a little bit trickier, but we're going to go through the steps bit by bit. So, uh, 0.3 seconds. That's probably enough. So, we have a iron volcano. It is in a vacuum that is sort of required, um, just so heat doesn't transfer through the gas into any of these tiles or um, from the iron into any of these extra tiles. We just want the iron, the liquid iron to cool down into solid iron and then from there that's actually just cycle you so you can empty everything okay so we just want to deal with you know the liquid iron nothing else uh same story down here i have a vacuum as well and again it's just stopping these hot steel tiles interacting with the gas down here and dumping heat into this area which could potentially dump into my conveyor loaders and my auto sweeper which are both made out of copper so these are made out of very low temperature items but because i'm actively cooling them they're perfectly fine so going through auto save and the bare basics the bare basics is we have a steam turbine it's converting steam into power at the same time it's cooling that steam into water dumping it out and we're dumping it on this tile here and it's fairly important we're dumping it as close to where our liquid iron is going to end up um if we can just get an eruption 30 odd seconds we can take you through the process so this is going to keep these tiles at about 130 degrees celsius roughly um just because the steam is only going to get down to really 125 
Ah, uh, there we go. So we have a little bit of iron. It's coming out. Uh, it's at a 1100 degrees already after it's dropped off here and hit our door and all our temp shift plates. Um, I've also got a diamond temp shift plate in the background. It just helps with transferring the heat from left to right and into in and out of the door. Um, it's just really making sure all these tiles are roughly the same heat at the same time. Um, this is going to keep counting up in, in kilograms and down in temperature as we're sucking the heat out of that chunk of iron. Uh, we finished yet? Let's stop again. Oh, there we go. So, we end up with about 350 kilos of iron. At the same time, it's going to start heating up all these tiles to a hotter temperature. Which is, of course, going to heat up the steam. Steam is going to go into the turbine. We're going to delete the heat, get some free power out of it, dump the liquid back on the ground. Um, we have our stock standard aqua tuner used to cool, cool down our turbine. The only addition to this one is we're actually bringing it out here and we're cooling just these couple of tiles down here. The reason we're cooling those is we've got a drop of oil on the ground, which is going to cool both our auto sweeper and our conveyor loader because they do need to interact with some fairly hot iron. At the moment, it's 340 degrees. It is going to drop down to around about a 140-ish, 130-ish degrees before it drops down this pool of iron, a uh, pool of a uh, pool or pool of oil and then it's going to cool down a little bit further but when the auto sweeper grabs it or when the conveyor loader grabs it they are going to absorb some of that heat out of that iron before they ship it off so we do need to provide some cooling down here and like i said i've just used a drop of oil the reason i've used oil over water or uh, polluted water is oil has Oil has a, a, a lot larger thermal range, so it goes up all at 400 degrees before it's going to actually boil and turn into petroleum, um, whereas water only go about 100 degrees, and I don't really need to deal with steam in this room. Um, as for the only other part of automation, I have a thermo sensor in here, which is actually in a ball of steam. Um, way I did that was literally I just built this side a little bit longer. I dumped some water down here, I built in a block, and then I just got rid of everything else and mopped up the water when I was done. Um, as for getting these into a vacuum, I should cover that really quickly. Just put in a gas pump, put in a gas pump, uh, gas pump down there, gas pipe out to there, high pressure gas vent or a normal gas vent, to hook up some power, wait. That's pretty much what it comes down to. It'll actually vacuum out this area beautifully. Once it's in a vacuum, you can leave the pump there, leave it hooked up to power, also one up here um, and just leave it there indefinitely or you can have a duplicate come in here and clean it out. I normally like to leave mine just so they're there in case I ever break the system in the future by doing something horrible and accidental um, and that way the gas pump's there to start bringing that gas straight back out. So um, our thermo sensor is set to and again every volcano is different every tamer is slightly different depending on your volcano. I found 128 degrees is my sweet spot at 108 uh, at 128 degrees in this tile my iron has cooled down about as much as it's going to it's not going to get much cooler than that um and it also means my iron volcano hasn't quite erupted yet it's about to but it hasn't quite got there so when we get down to 128 degrees and i'm just going to probably just fire it off anyway to just show you how the automation works when it gets down that cold, we actually run through an XOR gate. So that is, outputs a green signal if exactly one of its inputs is green. So if either of these two uh, inputs turn green, it's going to output a green here. But then it outputs a red signal if both or neither inputs are receiving a green signal. So as soon as it gets a... Um, as soon as it gets a red signal, it's going to then swap back and, and shut that door. And that's what we want. We want to open the door, and then we want to shut it fairly quickly. So what I've actually got here is I have our... Let's slow the game down. So I've got my uh, thermo sensor, which is set to, you know, 128. It's the sweet spot for me. When it goes to green, we actually send that to a NOT gate. So a NOT gate only has a green signal through if the input has received a green signal for longer than the selected... Uh, filter time. I've got mine set to 10 seconds and if we just click on that iron we can see this is going to time through. As it times through our oil, our iron rather is going to drop down. It's going to sit in this oil. It is going to start losing temperature but then again the auto soap is going to start grabbing it fairly quickly. If you want to get that oil cooler uh, again touch of automation with a clock sensor and set this to, hey, you can only be active for 4% of the cycle, you know, right around the middle of the night. 
middle of the night seems like a pretty good spot to me. And it's just going to let that, that iron sit there for a little bit longer, dumping its heat into the crude oil, which is also going to dump it in the radium plaque. And if I go back to my automation really quickly, the filter gate has now received that signal. It's held that green signal for 10 seconds before it's passed through to the XOR gate, which has then got two green signals. So then it swaps this one to red. And it's going to close the door. And you be set to uh, below. And we're ready and reset again. So uh, what happens is my thermo sensor detects that Everything's fine. We can drop drop the meat, the, the, the meat, drop the metal out. It opens the door for a fraction of a second and then resets and closes the door afterwards. Um, the iron can sit there and either get shipped straight out. I have three tons worth of metal in about 30 cycles. Um, or you can have um, the uh, auto sweeper pick it up straight away. I'm quite happy to let mine sit there for a little while, dump its cooling into the um, radiant pipe, it is going to force your aqua tuner to run a little bit more often, which is going to maybe make this a power negative situation. With me shipping out iron at around about 120 degrees, um, this made this a whole power positive system. So this has been running on three jumbo batteries for uh, 30 cycles. I added some power to it to get it boot uh, kickstarted, and then it's been running perfectly fine since. So that is my iron volcano copper Iron Volcano, Copper Volcano, or Gold Volcano Tamer. Um, down here we have our Leaky Oil Fisher uh, Tamer. Over here we have our Carbon Dioxide Vent, our Hydrogen uh, hydrogen Vent, and our Hot Polluted Oxygen Vent Tamer. Pretty much the same build for each, each one of them. Over here we have our Hot Steam Vent, which as you can see has cleaned out all the steam I dumped into it. We're back up to 700 kilos worth of steam here. And this steam turbine is just going to keep running forever. Uh, along with our cooling pipe, is going to keep running forever in this this one. It's it's fighting a a liquid tepidizer, um, and it's actually sometimes winning. So yeah, uh, and then finally we have our our volcano our volcano tamer, um, which is just giving us lots and lots of free power now. I can't say any of these builds are the best builds, but I can definitely say every single one of these builds work. And they're really there to give you an idea on how to tame each one of these different volcanoes and geysers you find on the map. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's a little bit longer than I would have liked. It's probably a little bit longer than you wanted to like, but would have liked. But there's a lot of information to get through. Um, as always, if you like the video, click the like button. If you want to share it with your friends or, or, you know, or make a comment below, by all means, go for it. Um, I know I appreciate the comments and especially the shares. So does the YouTube algorithm. YouTube algorithm really likes it when you share and like things. Uh, lastly, if you want to subscribe, very much appreciate it. As always, the button's over there on the left. There is links in the description to my Discord if you want to come join us on Discord, chat more about Oxygen Not Included, as well as talk about the upcoming series that's probably going to be starting in the next couple of days on Rhyme, as I said. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, bye.